In this video, we're going to begin our review of the trigonometric functions by talking about angles. Okay, so we need to um, talk about uh, different terminology for angles and how to convert from degrees to radians and radians to degrees. So, um, <clears throat> one of the most... Uh, doo -doo -doo. So, you form an angle by rotating a ray about its endpoint. Um, so let me just draw you a picture here. So you have a vertex. Okay, and then you have some initial side. Okay, and then you rotate it some amount. And you get a terminal side. And the angle that forms uh, is the angle in between these two. Uh, <clears throat> so that's the idea. Um, when the vertex of the angle is at the origin, so you're in the uh, xy plane. Okay, so you have the xy plane, and <clears throat> your vertex at the origin, and your initial side is the positive x-axis. That's when you're in standard position. Okay, so then maybe you rotate some amount, maybe like that. Okay, there's your angle. Here's your terminal side. Okay, now a positive rotation. Is counterclockwise. Okay, and negative rotation is clockwise. Um, now we can measure angles in different ways. Um, so the one that you're probably familiar with is uh, degree measures, okay, but we're also going to talk about radian measure. So for degree measure, uh, one complete rotation is 360 degrees. Okay, so if you're in the xy plane and you rotate all the way around so that your terminal side and your initial side are actually the same, that's when you get an angle of 360 degrees. Okay, so then we can break it up into pieces. Um, so for instance, if you rotate a quarter of the way, so you only go from here to here, okay, this is the angle, is 300, it's a quarter of 360, so this is 90 degrees, okay, if you go half the way, then you get 180 degrees, so you go from the positive x-axis to the negative x-axis, this is, oops, this is half of 360, so we did a half turn. Okay, so that's why it's 180 degrees. Okay, so some notation or some terminology. Um, an acute angle is an angle uh, between 0 and 90 degrees. Okay, and then if the angle is bigger than 90 degrees, we call it an obtuse angle. Okay, so this is from 90 degrees to 180 degrees is an obtuse angle. Um, <clears throat> and the 90 degree one we call a right angle. So while degree measure works well for some things, uh, it's not the best option in calculus, okay? So for like derivatives, it makes things more complicated. Um, so before we discuss the radian measure, um, I wanna talk about the unit circle a bit. So the unit circle is a circle of radius one centered at the origin. Okay, so you have a circle not great okay but it's centered at the origin 
but it's radius 1, so this point would be 1, 0, this would be 0, 1, this would be negative 1, 0, and 0, negative 1. Okay, so at each point, okay, the radius is 1. Now, um, the unit circle has equation uh, x squared plus y squared equals 1. Okay, this is because the, the equation for a general circle um, is x minus uh, h all squared plus y minus k all squared equals r squared. And this has center hk and radius r. Okay, so because we're centered at the origin, h and k are 0, and our radius is 1, so we want to equal 1 squared. Okay, so that's the basics for the unit circle. Okay, so when we have our angle in standard position, it's going to cut out a piece of the circle. So let me use a different color here. Okay, so maybe this is my, let's go like that. So the, here's my angle, the initial side and the terminal side. It's going to cut out this part of the unit circle. Okay, that's going to be my, that's the arc. Okay, so the radian measure uses this arc. So the radian measure of an angle is the length of this arc. Okay, so formed by the angle in the unit circle. So to determine the length, um, we need to know that the length of the arc is proportional to the radius of the circle. Um, so if the, arcs, if the length of the arc is s, um, the radian measure would be s. Okay, so what does it mean proportional? So we know r times some number is equal to s. Okay, so this is for... Um, uh, this is the radius of the circle. Okay, so um, the length of the arc is proportional to the radius of the circle. So because we're using radius 1, then we just get a 1 there. But in general, it's r times k equals s, which means if we solve for k, we get s over r. Okay. Now, what's special about this is it's the same, the ratio will be the same for a given angle. Oops. Um, and it doesn't matter, it doesn't depend on the circle. Okay. Um, <clears throat> So we can define radian measure for arbitrary circles. Okay, so for angle theta, the ratio of the length of the arc s to the length of the radius is the same regardless of the ratio. So we define the radian measure of theta to be the length of the arc divided by the, the radius uh, length. Okay, so this is going to be s over r. So, we want to compare to the degrees uh, <clears throat> uh, and the radian measures. So, one clean complete rotation, we already said, was 360 degrees. What would that be on the, the length, what would the arc look like on the unit circle? Okay, so if this is x and y, okay, and I draw my unit circle here. Okay, my angle goes all the way around. So that means that the arc is in fact all of the circle. Okay, so here the arc is equal to the circumference of the circle. Oops. Okay, now we know that circumference is 2 pi r. Okay, so that's how you compute the circumference. So on the unit circle, r equals 1, so this is going to be 2 pi times 1. So 2 pi. 
Okay, so what that tells us is 360 degrees is the same as 2 pi radians. So we normally simplify this a bit and get rid of the 2. Okay, so if I divide both sides by 2, I get 180 degrees is pi radians. Okay, that's normally what we want to use to do our conversions. So, one radian, if I want to get one radian, I'm going to divide uh, both sides of this equation by pi. Okay, so one radian is going to be 180 degrees 180 over pi degrees, and if I want one degree, I'm going to divide both sides by 180, so it's going to be pi over 180 radians. So this is what we can use to convert between the two. So let's do an example. Convert 30 degrees to radians. Okay, so 30 degrees you could think of as 30 times 1 degree. Okay, now one degree we know is pi over 180 radians. Okay, now if I simplify this, this is going to be pi over 6 radians because 30 um, divides into 180 six times. Okay, another way in a picture that you can think of 30 um, degrees. I'm just doing the top half here. Okay, so I know that all the way here is um, pi, or 180 degrees. So what I want to do is divide it into 6. Okay, because I it's pi by 6, I'm dividing it into 6. Okay, so if I split it in half, and then split each half in 3s, Okay, then I get 30 degree chunks. Okay, so then this is 30 degrees. From here to here is 30 degrees. From here to here is 30 degrees. Or pi by 6 radians. Okay, for each. And then if you wanted to, say, do 4 pi by 6, okay, you could actually count 1, um, one 2, 3, 4, and I'd know it would be this angle here. Okay, so this can be useful. Okay, let's try another one. So 135 degrees, you could say it's 135 times 1 degree. So it's 135 times pi over 180 radians. Okay, both... Um, so these are divisible by 45. Okay, so you're going to get 3 pi by 4 radians here. Okay, so if you wanted to draw this, again, um, you want to cut pi, so the straight angle, into 4 bits. So we cut it in half, and then we cut each half in half. Okay, and then I want to go 1, 2, 3 pi by 4s. So this would be my angle here. Okay, so that is 3 pi by 4, or 135 degrees. Okay, um, what about pi by 3? So convert to degrees. Okay, so this is like pi by 3 times 1 radian. Okay, now 1 radian is 180 divided by pi degrees. So now we're in degrees, so we just want to simplify. So the pi's are going to cancel. Okay, so then I have 180 over 3 degrees, which is actually 60 degrees. Okay, similarly, 9 pi by 4 is 9 pi over 4 times 1 radian. So that's 9 pi by 4 times 180 over, not 4, but pi uh, degrees. So I can cancel the pi's. Um, 
4 goes into 180 45 times, and we end up getting 405 degrees for our angle. Now, some common ones that we're going to use a lot, okay, so that you should sort of know these. So here's the degree, and here's its associated radians. Okay, so 0 and 0, those are the same. So 0 degrees is so 0 radians. 30 degrees, we said, was pi by 6. Okay, 45 is a common one. That's pi by 4. 60, we just found, was pi by 3. 90 degrees is pi by 2. Okay, 180 degrees we know is pi. Okay, 270 degrees is um, 3 pi by 2. And then 360 degrees is 2 pi. So the only one that maybe you think is weird, why should I know this one? Okay, 270 is this angle here. Um, so here's my initial side, and then I go all the way to here. So because it's on the axes, um, that sort of makes it more common. Okay, so it's sort of an easy one. You just have to count pi by twos. Okay, so it has a negative angle, so this would be negative 90 degrees if I went clockwise instead. Um, so that's the intro, basic uh, angles, um, how to convert between the two. We're going to be using radians um, more, and radians are actually unitless. Okay, so I was writing rad here, but in fact, you, you don't need to. So if you don't see a unit, you should assume radians. Okay, if it's degrees, it has to have the degree symbol. Okay, so you should be, um, we should be working in radians most of the time, but sometimes it helps for your brain to convert to degrees.